Hey, welcome to the podcast. Hello. Hi. Hello there. Oh, you know, I've done pretty good, but now it feels like a nap, you know? <laughs> well, it's because you're almost done. The hard work is done. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of hard work being in here. <laughs> hey, uh, speaking of hard work, have you been following our Insta Story Takeover Day? Nikki's was yesterday. Yeah, I did. Instagram Takeover at Radio U Official on the Insta Story. So if you missed it, uh, there's highlights. So then every day this week from our Radio U DJs, they'll be taking over Insta Stories. So you can kind of see what it's like for them. Um, not just here at Radio U, but throughout the whole day. All right. So we got that. Uh, what else do we have? Podcast. Oh, the podcast. The podcast. Right. Uh, that's all. So those two things. Here's what's in the podcast. <laughs> uh, let's see. Football. We t- I, college football comes up a couple times. It does. And I don't know. Based on your response to it, I feel like, and even others' response, I feel like, what is it, like, the stages of grief? Like, I feel like it's shock right now, and so people aren't really responding with the same emotions that I think will be maybe by this weekend or when the official announcement's made. I don't know, The passion <laughs> and the sadness and the despair, I I think, will come out more. I almost hope you're wrong because some of what I've seen so far is, is just you like, think it's already there. It's like, guys, <laughs> what? Like, what is going on? You people are freaking out. Yeah, I know. But I get it. Yeah. Like, I get it. So we talk about that a lot. All right. So there's that. Uh, other things, a new smart toothbrush, Wendy's breakfast. We get into Shark Week a little bit more. Stuff happening at Dollar General. Uh, Aaron talks to us uh, via the tweets. Uh, about a turkey dinner candy corn. Ugh, candy uh, corn. Some stuff at DC Comics. Mm-hmm. New Zealand spoke too soon. I don't to keep you busy for a while. It should There's be more. hopefully enough. It'll be a surprise. <laughs> so we hope you guys have a great day. Remember to follow us on the Instagrams. Yeah, go to Radio U Official. You can follow us there. If you want to personally follow us, Obadiah Radio U. And then Radio U Nikki, you can find us there too. All right. Well, Enjoy the day. Have a wonderful one. Thanks for listening. Bye. The definition of insanity is putting the riot on again and again and expecting a better result. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Who's This one might hurt the most for everybody. It's not official yet. It's supposed to be today. It's supposed to be official today. Like the, the word is, the rumor, the all but confirmed statement is that the Big Ten is going to be canceling their college football season this fall. That the leaders of the Big Ten voted that it would not be safe? It was like they, because there's 12 teams in the Big Ten, and they voted yesterday, as I understand it, 10 to 12. And they'll announce today that there's not going to be a college football season. But that's Big Ten, so I haven't heard the other conferences. And just to be clear, I know the postponement music is like a thing, but I got to tell you, it feels a little more like this. This one to impactful. Me. <laughs> I I know this is dumb and I get it, but I I sat down yesterday just staring straight ahead, trying to think about what does the fall feel like? What fall? When there's no football. Mm. I mean, I I'm not kidding when I tell you this. Saturdays in the fall, especially the late fall, I've got a fireplace. I would just get a bunch of firewood build a fire in the morning, watch some game day and like football's just on. Even if I'm not watching it, it's on. It's just there. Well, you'll have possibly other conferences. Or am I going to watch the SEC? You'll I watch hate the anything. SEC. You'll watch anything. You think I will? I mean, I mean the Mac, the Mac conference canceled. <laughs> I don't care. If not, like, you that know to how me you... is like things are getting desperate. I'll watch that. You're normally not someone who goes back and watches old seasons, but this might drive everybody to doing that. I just. The Do you hard... think the okay. others will all follow, though? Uh, well, I don't know. The The argument it has been people are saying that, like, no matter what happens, there's no way the SEC would ever cancel football. Mm, ever. You never know. And. <laughs> I don't know. I have so many thoughts about it. Aww. Like, is it, is it, a, 
you know, like is COVID-19, is it that big of a deal? And I know I are, please don't, don't come after me. I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud. You're just, in, just you're upset too. Sometimes you're in shock when something's so big, like I, the next step outside of us not having this college football would be, let's go ahead and hit Christmas while we're at that's it. That's exactly that's what it. I thought. I was like, <laughs> I'll tell you what. Take it away. Who cares? We already know. Nobody's saying it, but we all know trick or treat is not happening. <laughs> There's no candy. I don't even know if Thanksgiving is going to be a thing and let's be honest christmas is next it's right around the corner christmas <laughs> is next so jen just texted says she works at a college and they have bets on how soon they're going to shut down and if they're all going to get furloughed oh jen i'm sorry so they people are worried at That's, colleges on what it's going to do man, it's, it's all so complicated and tough i don't want anybody i don't know can we just go you back? Just to, how, can we just say this? I know. Can we just go back to the way it was? I know. Remember, okay, <laughs> think about last August. You were probably like, man, life sucks and I hate everything and whatever. It was whatever. just hot. Like, that was you, just the worst part. That was it. What you don't know is last August you were living the good old days. <laughs> That's what you didn't know. You didn't know they were the good old days. <laughs> and now you're like, can we just go back to then when I hated everything? A normal hate? Can I go back to hating stuff? <laughs> I'm so sorry. It as of right now, it's not official. It looks very official. I love I checked in on some friends yesterday and they're like, no, no, no. Maybe Ryan, they won't say that today. Ryan Day's gonna work it out. <laughs> they said that some players wanted to go to a different conference and still play. Like they gonna work it out. They wanted to make something happen, but I'm sure there'll be an announcement today, at least on the Big Ten, and then who knows what else will happen? Oh, why do we care so much about sports? Why? What's I mean, the problem with it? We No, no, no. I'm just saying, like, when you think about it, it's not that important, but we have made it important. You know, it's the difference between inherent and con, what not conveyed value. Uh, anyway, it's fine. It just, you, it, just it's another important to me, all right? I know, there it is. <laughs> what you're about to hear will live on the internet forever sorry internet the worst of the riot podcast shark week nikki and i've been so excited as we have watched none of it oh we forgot we mentioned it do it was it yesterday just that it was shark week but yeah, that was about did. it but nikki i am looking at uh, little highlights from last night yeah and it turns out that for the air jaws show that we didn't watch but exists uh, we they recorded a world record jump. I actually saw the picture. I did see that trending. And it's fantastic to see, especially if you're into like great white sharks. It's amazing that this jump could uh, this jerk could jump out jump out of the water. I want you to try that one I more time. Do that. I can't <laughs> just start at the top. I don't want to. It's amazing that this shark can jump out of the water yeah. like that. Yay! Yeah, come on, come on. <laughs> it's too much. She did it. Too much. She did it, guys. <laughs> It's going to be a good day, right? Uh, it's fascinating to see uh, just how high it gets. Yeah. So it it is 15 feet. The shark jumped 15 feet into the air. And yet we're still having conversations about the majestic and much maligned great white shark. Well, it's a flying, killing machine. It's not common for all sharks. Uh, really, this is just this area where they do that. It does make when you watch like the Meg and all those other shark movies. You when mean it, the documentaries? When it jumps out of the water and you're like, oh, that can never happen. It does yes, it make you wonder that it can jump higher and do things that you weren't aware of. You know, that's a good idea. I should watch the Meg again. At least for Shark Week, you should. I should. That sounds more interesting to me than real Shark Week. Well, they're excited to hear that. You know, they worked really hard. You know what? The people that made the Meg did work really hard. <laughs> and they are glad to hear that. <laughs> I meant the Discovery people for Shark Week. Yeah, well, I'll tell you. And just for the record, I bought the Meg. I have the Meg Steelbook. <laughs> You do not. I forgot you do. Oh, my Best gosh. Best Buy was like, we can't sell this thing to save our lives. Ten bucks. And I was like, like it's yeah. actually cheaper than the digital copy. It was. <laughs> it was cheaper to buy that than it was to buy it digitally. I was like, sure, whatever. I'll take it. So maybe uh, maybe tonight. Maybe not. I'll forget about this by the time I get home. But. So when they were taking the picture, uh, they said they observed the breaching behavior of great white sharks um, during the show. And he... He's just been cataloging all of these incidences of the shark jumps. Jeez. 
Count me out, dude. I'm terrified. I'd be afraid it would try to get me in the boat or whatever. Like, I couldn't take my boat out. And they're like, yeah, this area is full of great white sharks. I'd be like, uh. The jumping ones. Okay. Yeah. They're kind of, <laughs> no. 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 It's like uh, even worse. Appreciate you guys, but they'll, no. They'll come out to see you. No. <laughs> I think I, they're not doing it, like, constantly. Doesn't matter. Just It's the possibility. That they could jump up and it could onto the boat. Happen. Nope, nope. The Riot. They're kind of a big deal. Uh, hey, can we do that again? Maybe a little more energy? Uh, no. Radio U. Listen, there's bad news out there, okay? We could get into the bad news. But how about we find what Hudson calls his silver lining? Let's get some silver lining, Nikki. Oh, let's have some good news. Right? How about this? McDonald's. Wendy's. Breakfast. Mm Mm-hmm. Wendy's decided that they were going to throw down. In the war on breakfast. Remember that back? Or the it breakfast was war. Very early in March. Mm-hmm. Maybe like even that first week. Like two days before the whole world shut down. Yeah, but they were right in on yeah. relaunching their breakfast. Not everybody realized, but Wendy's had had breakfast a few years ago. It went away and then McDonald's and others. Breakfast became a big game changer for fast food. So Wendy's brought it back. That sounds like my life. I had breakfast a couple years ago. Yeah. <laughs> bringing it back i did but i'm bringing it back (laughs) yeah so wendy says that (laughs) despite everything going on breakfast has been a success for them wendy's it has did i say mcdonald's no no no. i'm just clarifying yeah wendy's Wendy's is saying that breakfast sales now make up eight percent of their overall business it's actually pretty good amount Mm, because for other fast food locations restaurants uh their breakfast stuff is hurting right because people started working from home different schedules no one was getting up and going out uh, to get breakfast unless you had to right and no one had to like so numbers are just very much down which is why you know mcdonald's they canceled their all-day breakfast streamlined their menu uh, because of just a lack of people wanting that right and I just want to say, Wendy's breakfast is the best breakfast. <laughs> so you're glad to see this? <laughs> Especially since the White Castle closed down near us. We can't go over and get... They had a wonderful, wonderful Remember the, the waffle the sandwiches? Waffle, this waffle sandwich that was so good. So Duncan and Starbucks has also seen business drop for their mornings. Just fewer customers Not because Wendy's, of lockdowns. Nikki. Not Wendy's. People are taking the time to go out and get that. So I went to Wendy's for breakfast last week. I snagged myself. Well, I went... For a honey butter chicken biscuit. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. But I ended up, because they were having a coupon in their app, I got myself there. It was like bacon, sausage, egg, cheese, croissant or something. That was all right. Did you like it? Oh, that was all right. They're saying for Wendy's, some of the like the main two items would be the Baconator breakfast sandwich and the Frosty Chino that's done well. I think maybe, was it a, maybe I just had, maybe it was a Baconator. Maybe, maybe that's what I had. but that doesn't go on a croissant thing. It doesn't. Whatever I had came on a croissant, and it was, I mean, it's Listen, probably. It's all the same. It's probably killing me now, but. Just I, different bread with it. It was so <laughs> good. So the Wendy's breakfast menu, that was back on March 2nd when it uh, launched, which wow. was two weeks before lockdown started. Remember March? Remember? Uh, no, not most of March wasn't great either. We're talking March 2nd. I so. know, but like, <laughs> remember the beginning of March and how different it was and how, like, you just went places. What's worse than the worst of the riot? The worst of the riot podcast. Yeah. You did this to yourself. Podcast. Riot. Radio U. USA! (laughs) USA! Nice. USA! What are we cheering for? Well, in the United States, we have hit uh, 5 million confirmed coronavirus cases, which means that we actually have more coronavirus people in the United States than they have people in New Zealand. Yes. Yeah. That was, do you know why they picked New Zealand? Because that was trending over the weekend because people were saying, oh, look at New Zealand. They haven't had a confirmed continued case in like a hundred days. Yes. But then everybody was really hitting them back saying it's such a small place population wise. And it's an island. It's an island and they have completely closed off tourism and travel Yeah. Um, outside of a couple of filming things, which I think they now have open. They have. Uh, <laughs> but You're outside right. of that, for the normal people, 
people, you're not allowed in. Yeah. So, so it, it's it's they're saying that that's not uh, sustainable when you open tourism back up. Right. Which maybe they don't. Mm-hmm. I you know I don't know. It remind. Oh, I wasn't even thinking about it. But now that we're talking about it, World War Z. It's a book by Max Brooks. And it's a take on what would happen if a zombie apocalypse, like you know, actually happened. And one of the one of the countries that makes it almost unharmed is Israel because mm-hmm. they invite they it's and you know it's don't want to get too whatever, but like they anybody who was a Palestinian, like they basically have all these people they invite in, and then they're like, no one comes in, sure, and they're the one country that like makes it basically. Um, Anyway, that's mm-hmm. they're that's the New Zealand. The they're, they're the, the New Zealand of Max Brooks's zombie apocalypse. <laughs> uh, the other number I was going to give you is that uh, they're saying that as of right now, the United States has seen two hundred thousand more deaths this year than would be expected At in previous time, years. Previous yes. years, but here's what gets me: that comes from the CDC, and yet, and I know I'm not. I can't be the only one that's having this problem. I have friends on Facebook that are like, no, deaths this year, five people. We've had, they expected four people. So there, it's not real. Where are the numbers? Every time a government organization or somebody puts out a number, I immediately have people that feed me enough misinformation about that number to make me go, ah, is that real? I'm not sure. Is it real? Are they right? Is this wrong? Is this happening? Just don't don't know. know. You don't know. Seriously, I feel I I know more things and feel less informed than I ever have in my entire life. That's a good way to put it because you don't know everything's coming from different things and you don't know what's what's right or wrong or misleading or exaggerated or not focused enough on it. You just don't know. I'm. I, and again, guys, like I'm not I'm not trying to make some kind of a, I'm not pointing fingers or trying to make a sweeping statement. I'm just telling you that I feel like every number I see here comes a group of people to tell me why that number is not true, why I'm being being manipulated, et cetera, et cetera. And after a while, I'm just left in this space where I'm like, well, you know what? I don't know who to believe. <laughs> I don't know what to believe. I'm going to just stay home, I guess. And, you know, we would have said yesterday and just get ready for football and. Oh wait, <laughs> Nikki! Don't say. Don't say I just want to really like get that. us at our lowest moment. It's fine. You didn't want to watch Big Ten football at all, did you? It's fine. Uh, I'm fine. Every time things are not fine, that's when we always repeat, "It's fine." You know why? Because we're putting our faith out there. That's, that's all we got. We're, just, we're believe, just keep saying that. We're believing that it's going to be okay, because that's what we have right now. The Riot with Obadiah and Nikki on Radio U. So here's my question to you. Grab your phone and get ready to text 877-2-RADIO-U. I'm, I'm genuinely curious about this. And Nikki, feel free to jump in. What is that thing that you like that a lot of other people don't really like or care about? You're you know talking I mean? like food or TV I, shows? It could be anything. Is anything? it a TV show? Is it a food? Is it a book that you love? Whatever. Where nobody cares. And in fact, they're like, <laughs> they're angry about You're it. You're kind of dumb <laughs> for liking that. Uh, I, I'll tell you what mine is. Mm-hmm. Like, I love buying Blu rays. And I saw yesterday, and again, you're going to see this affects like no one, which is why I want to know <laughs> if there's anyone else. Does anybody else have like this little thing that you care about that nobody else seems to care about until you go to Reddit and then you join a forum with six people? And then the problem is that encourages you. So you keep going when you should have maybe backed down. Maybe. But I see yesterday uh, the Disney company, Walt Disney, they have basically said, hey, we're not releasing physical media anymore. Oh, like, really? They haven't like completely announced that. Soon but basically, 4K and Blu-rays? Basically, they have any plans they had. Home Alone is coming out next month on a physical 4K release. And they're just like, yeah, that's it. They're not, they have no plans to all release anything ever. And they bought Fox, which yeah. means all of that stuff from like Touchstone and Fox. They're like, yeah, we're not going to do any catalog releases anymore. So much of their support went into Disney Plus, where that's going to be the push to get people to pay the money for it. Right. Instead of, so the people who pay the money for that will get to watch the items there. So then that's even less people wanting to buy a physical item. Yeah. 
So that I'm just telling you, like I I read that today, and I was just like, man, it's only you. When a major company <laughs> does this, mm-hmm. like that's it. Well, Melinda texted says she um, she loves black licorice. Okay. And I don't, yeah, but like, I don't know there's much. no danger that they're going to stop that. I know, but you were just saying things that if you like something that everybody hates, not a lot of people like licorice. All right. Like Sean loves to play and buy yo-yos. That works. Okay. Dude, you know what, Sean? I kind of do too. I've got a, a Duncan butterfly and I don't think I've ever told anybody this, but like I do yo-yo tricks when I get bored sometimes. Yeah. I used to carry a yo-yo with me everywhere I went. Wow. And that was not that long ago. <laughs> In case I wanted to say it was like young Obi. It's like, well, not as long ago. Not necessarily. Hmm, Justin says uh, he hates avocados. So Wait, You hate avocado? Look, wow. Okay, well, uh, that's the opposite, but it's fine. Like, A lot of people like the avocados. Uh, Carl says Stargate. Yeah, I do hate that. Oh, no, he says he likes it, though, I think. Best 10 years of TV ever. <laughs> Oh, everyone, my wife it. and I rewatch it. We're very sad when it ends. Oh, mm. Okay, well, that's his thing. Angela says pineapple on pizza. So, I mean, I guess we all have our little quirks, our little things. <laughs> Zach For likes you, though, knives. It's, it's a uh, Disney, a major worldwide company. I'm just is disagreeing with you. I'm, they don't want to sell you anything anymore. That's nah, fine. Scott likes to eat onions. I, you know what? We haven't seen from anybody. I like to buy 4K Blu-rays. Haven't seen no that one text. Else? That text's not coming through. And I haven't bought a physical disc in a long time. Tim says I love retro wave. I me too. Dude, I, I'll go on YouTube and listen to Retro Wave and Synth Wave for hours because there's no words. While you're <laughs> shopping for Blu-rays. And playing with your Yo yo. Yo yo. That's his day. So please make sure to get all that on our Insta stories today, will you? I don't okay. That's the OB you want to show. The thing is, is like I don't think I'm like a bad person or a bad whatever, but like, man, I, I really end up liking stuff where it's like, why bother liking it? They're just going to not do well, it. No, you can like it, but just, uh, do you share it with everybody? Don't well, tell everybody. If I don't share it, then they won't then make Then does it more. even happen? Oh, oh, it's fine. I'm fine. Are you guys fine? Me I too. think we all are. It's fine. I like football. They're taking that away too, so... Obadiah and Nikki tried their hardest, and that's what really matters. This is the worst of the Ryan podcast. Ever have occasion to swing into the Dollar General? Now, don't mistake Dollar General. I just can't. When does it stop being a Dollar General? I just can't every time. That's a white Christmas thing. It's fine. When does he stop being a general? When he stops having a dollar. Apparently. Nikki, the general is here to get things done. Yes. So Dollar General. Uh-huh. Uh, they have you ever been? Um, yes. Even though isn't there like also a Dollar Tree? Don't mistake it for Dollar Tree. And I think there's one other type or something, but uh It's I, only a dollar. I think yes, I think I've been into a Dollar General. Fun- Sometimes they, dollars for funsies. Every so often they'll get like uh one of those limited edition chips and they'll they'll get it so where you have to go there for it. Well that's the part I don't get about Dollar General is it's basically like a weird it's clearance not, sort of thing. Like yeah, it's like it's not Walmart, but it's also not Dollar Tree. It like they they have, you know, food and like you you could grocery shop in there if you wanted to. I like it just it's to me it's a strange place because it doesn't I if you're called Dollar General, it should just be a dollar. Like your store, everything's a dollar. And you go in there and it's like, no, no, no. It's generally a dollar. That's we the general. accept dollars. <laughs> That's it. That's all. <laughs> so what are they doing? Well, uh in Saxonburg, Pennsylvania, apparently they had a, a Visigoth. Wandering around the outside of Dollar General with a sword. He was just standing outside. Uh, Individuals carrying a sword around the general. Mm -hmm. Did they capture him? Well, they ended up doing that. Um, But when I look at it and you given some of the time that I've spent in Dollar General, like when I come out of Dollar General and there's a man holding a sword, it would just be like, yeah. Okay. Well, you're not surprised. Like, if I went to Walmart and a man walked in with a sword, I wouldn't be too surprised. Uh, I wouldn't be acting on it yet because 
I guess I just assume that's what one does. Well, I will tell you this. That it's like, acceptable. My take with the guy with the sword is no eye contact. Yeah. And uh, I'm just going to walk. I'm walking straight past him. Yeah, people people wear, like, it's a statement piece. It's not like you're threatening with it. It's just a part of your statement that you're making. He was making a statement. Yeah. So he got to make his statement downtown. He got to go to. He got to go for a ride. <laughs> The jail to see the policeman general. But then you have to start asking yourself, like, if he is the answer here, this guy shows up with a sword and I call the police, or does the guy show up with a sword and then you just bring your own sword? Maybe there's there's nothing wrong with that. The idea is, like, you have a sword and so do I. So if you start anything with your sword, I want you to know I'm here to finish it with mine. Can you buy a sword? It's a deterrent. Maybe. Maybe. You're just going in to see. Just go in the back. They have some swords. <laughs> sure. Why not? Well, Sean just texted, you can buy a toilet brush and pizza rolls within the same aisle at Dollar General. That feels right. And you just got to get it all in the store. You that totally make it feels fit. right. In <laughs> fairness, after those uh, pizza rolls, you might need a toilet brush. So Jeff yeah. said out here in the boonies, D- Dollar General, he calls a DG, is Walmart. He's kind of right. <laughs> so really? Yeah. Like I've, I've been in towns where it's just like. That's, that's all you get? When you say you're going to the store. That's the store you're going to? You're going to Dollar General. And if you bring your sword, bring your sword. If Whatever. not, don't. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. So I maybe we should just all start carrying swords. I just don't want anybody to get me with one. Yeah, that's that's the concern. Yeah. Because you might find, out of 10 people just carrying a sword, yeah. you don't want to find the one who is actually wanting to hurt someone with a sword. It's a good call. Giving every novelty food the publicity it so blatantly desires. It's The Riot on Radio U. I want to say hi to Aaron, who just hit us up on Twitter, at Obadiah Radio U, and... What, at Radio U, Nikki? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I don't know. If you go back years ago, there used to be, I think they're still around, but I don't know. you remember Jones Soda? Of course I do. Uh, they used to do this like Thanksgiving party pack of soda. So sodas it was like that were all the Thanksgiving flavors. Mashed potato soda. Turkey. Turkey soda. Green beans. Green bean soda. And then... I think I like a sweet potato or like other stuff. Yeah, they would always remember. come out with one this year. This is candy corn from Brock's, but it's candy corn that has the flavors of Thanksgiving in one candy corn. So there are, is it all in one or do different? It looks like different pieces have different flavors, I think. Because like if I look in there, there's a green. Do you see the one that's like completely green? green? Is that the green bean one? I assume so. So here's the flavors they say are in Brock's candy corn Thanksgiving turkey dinner. Yeah, the the d- turkey dinner pack. They wouldn't want to call it Thanksgiving, Nikki, because that might have some sort of a weird religious connotation. <laughs> they don't want to. They just wouldn't need to want generalize to do that. It. Yeah, they're not doing that. Don't want to. You don't want or- to be thankful. You know what? <laughs> the other side of it is maybe they're afraid that Thanksgiving will be canceled, and by calling it turkey dinner, it becomes relevant all year long. Well, this, you can have turkey at other times. That's not just Thanksgiving. That's We fair. normally don't have this set up, but you can have turkey. So the flavors in the Bronx, turkey dinner, candy corn, green beans, roasted turkey, mm-hmm. cranberry sauce, Ginger glazed carrot. All right. Sweet potato pie. That sounds good. Stuffing. But they're in candy corn form, and no one likes... It's not a statement. Okay. Most people do not like candy corn. How about it? Most people I know... <laughs> Do and not like candy it. corn. You like the... Oh, the pumpkins. Or is the that mellow cream pumpkins. Mellow, mellow cream pumpkins. You like those. And I candy do. corn's not far off. I think it's, it's the not, same thing. It, it is, but like it's a different flavor. Wow. They're gross. So now you can have the turkey dinner gross. Nikki, could you... What? Just be a little more respectful of others and their taste. I should be supportive of all of our candy. There's probably like a half a person out there that just got so <laughs> excited. <laughs> About the Brock's Turkey Dinner Candy Corn. So that's available um, coming soon, I guess? Uh, Well, okay. This is not like an official announcement. Somebody got their hands on it. They said they got it at Walgreens, but that Walgreens didn't have it out. They had it in the back. Oh, now we got to go ask to go in the back. Yeah. Great. But I'm just telling you what the tweet says. Hey, I got the Pringles last time at Walgreens. You got to go this time. I'm fine with that. And you need to go ask. I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm following this Twitter account that Aaron tweeted at us. Is it all new food stuff? It's at Candy Hunting, and it's just them 
like the whole account is them looking for new candy flavors. That's awesome. Java chip Oreos. Mm-hmm. So they and they went looking for Kit Kat black and white senses. All I've right. never, What's never that? heard of that. A chocolate hazelnut Oreo. Have we? We haven't had that. Don't think so. And a Krispy Kreme s'mores donut. Hey, what, where are all these things? I don't know, but I'm following them. They <laughs> well, just got a follow out of it. Perfect. We need to find out all this stuff for possible food fights. Annie says um, yes to the pumpkins that you like, Obi. They're, oh, so, they're good. so good. Jim says candy corn with peanuts is basically a payday bar. You know, okay. Have you heard that before? I have, and I want you to know that last fall, I was at a, a party, a little get-together. Not that we'll a have what? one this year. A what? It's where people came together to celebrate uh, for no reason, really. Sure. Yeah, and I had peanuts and candy corn. It's actually good. And I'm not really a candy corn guy, but it, it, it was... It fixes it? It was pretty good, yeah. Jeremy says he likes candy corn. Well... So add some peanuts to it, too. I guess it's better. There's our half person. <laughs> Thanks for texting us. You can text 877 radio U, or if you ever want to follow us at Radio U Riot on our Facebook page, always message us there, too. The worst podcast with the best listeners. This is the worst of the Riot podcast. Look, I don't want to bring anybody down. I don't. But it's crazy out there, right? I feel like one of the hardest things about all this COVID stuff is, of course, we all know that they're just constantly like, you know what? Maybe for the best if we just cancel this. <laughs> maybe next we'll year, postpone. right? Maybe next year, guys. <laughs> maybe. I mean, we've been getting a lot of that. Well, remember, if you even go back, it used to be it was just postponed to around now. now and it's now just it's like, just whatever. It's like, we'll see you next year. Yeah. Oh, we'll get around it's for the it. better. <laughs> and I, I get it. And it's one of the things that I think is hard is that there's a certain amount of we trust the adults to tell us everything's going to be OK. Like, oh, we got this plan. We're going to fix it. But now everybody's like, the adults don't know. They're lying to you. The numbers are a lie. That This is a lie. And the adults are like, no, it's real. And like, it's all this thing. And we're all whatever. And it, it's nerve wracking. And in the middle of that, what do you got to do? You got to go back to school. You got to go back to work. You got to go back to life and, you know, you're like, should I, should I stay home? Should I work from home? What I could do school online. I got to figure all this. It, it's crazy out there. I get it. And it is tough that the things that we think, the people that we think know what they're doing, may, maybe they don't like, maybe they don't have it all together. But in the middle of all this, here's what I want you to know. Uh, Jesus is inviting you into a relationship with him. Got to go back to school. He's going to go back to school with you. Got to go back to work. He's going to go back to work with you. Got to stay home. He's going to stay home with you. You getting a picture of what I'm talking about here? God doesn't want to visit you once a week. He doesn't want to text you from time to time. Jesus wants with his spirit to move into where you are right now and where you have to go. Whether you want to go there or you don't want to go there, he's going to go with you. And I just know that when I've got God with me, I can face doing some things that I don't want to do. I, for some reason, and it, it doesn't completely make sense, but like I can be more at peace facing some unknowns with him around than I am with him not around. You're like, well, Obadiah, can you put that on paper? And I, I can just tell you that's my experience. In my relationship with Jesus, he helps me with stuff like that. He could do the same thing for you. Don't go through today alone. Don't go through next week alone. Don't go through the potentially postponed college football season alone. Invite Jesus into where you are. Say, Jesus, I want that. I want you in my life. I want you to fill me with your spirit. And I want some help today. Show up. Hang out with me. I don't want to do this by myself. Boom. Good start, right? The whining, the loathing, the insightful commentary on postmodern historical doctrine. Okay, maybe not the last one. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Uh, Nick, you last night, DC Comics mm -hmm. and Warner Brothers, Warner DC is owned by Warner Brothers, had massive layoffs. They did? They said that they are still going to be making comic books. Yeah. But they cut. I don't have numbers, but the reports say here, this report from Variety said an enormous amount of staff. So do, so this is the comic side of it. Yes. Is that because of COVID or I feel like comic books have just been down for years. So it, it almost was like this was 
probably anticipated before. It doesn't say. Hmm. Um, I will. I. I mean, I don't know this. I'm speculating. Like the comics industry has like its ups and downs. Like it. It has times when it's doing well and times when it's not. Um, and DC Comics to me, like I. I don't know. I just I don't like them as much. I want to. I do. I want to. Sure. I like Superman, and of course, I like Batman. If you don't like Batman, what's wrong with you? Do they come out as He's often? Awesome. So, like a comic series, does it come out as often as like a movie does, or is it no? It's it, once to be, or twice a year. Most or? monthly. Well, Not no, all, like a, a new series kicks off or something. Uh, you know, it just depends. A lot of times they'll do things, or are they just <laughs> always it, going. Comic books are a, structured a lot, at least in Marvel, the way that WrestleMania or uh, the WWE is. They have all these side storylines and all the stuff that goes on, but they all converge on WrestleMania. Ah, And usually, and again, I can't speak for DC Comics, but in Marvel, it all comes down to what the summer crossover event is going to be. And then everything spins out and then it comes back in. And they do that as a way to get you to buy more comics. Sure. Um, it has been working, so yeah. that's the problem. When I when I started realizing that the goal of buy, when I buy a comic, their goal was to get me to buy more, I was like, I just can't anymore. I just can't. Well, they got you on the hook for every month, unless you do one of these subscription things, I'm assuming. I got a job my freshman year of high school, and I was like, guys, I can't. Oh, you I, stopped. I, I, you used to get my allowance, but I can't give you my wages. I have to stop. So DC Comics uh, had massive layoffs. They did, and they say they're all restructuring. They're not going away, and they're being further, like, put into Warner Media, where they're going to make more animated films, mm-hmm. more films, and some comic books. I don't know. Can we get Man of Steel 2? This is the worst of the riot on Radio U. So, Nikki, it uh, it continues to not look good. And I don't just mean my face on Instagram. I mean the plans for college football this fall. And now are they saying more than just the Big Ten? No, or? We, don't have, we don't have all the details. Today's so. the day, guys. You just know it's all going to be just ripped away. The expectation is that the Big Ten and maybe the Pac-12 Pac-12? will today say, hey, we're, no not, go. we're not playing this fall uh, due to it. What's interesting is that... Or, and they can't just not, do it without any any fans? It's not the fans. They're because saying, they were they were going to take it down to like 20% per stadium. They were. But then you've got like the NBA and you got professional players. Yeah. But I know they're paid and compensated and stuff, uh, but they're just not wanting to risk that for college players. I guess not. I, I will say nobody hate me, but like this is just something that I'm wondering is, okay, like as a, like an insurance actuary mm-hmm. where the idea is like, hey, uh, it costs this much money to do it. It costs us this much money to not do it. But if people were to sue us, it yes. could cost us this much money. So if you went there and got it, you could a player or a classmate or a person who attended the game could absolutely. So, well, that's what I'm wondering is that the risk is, is this. Oh, it sounds terrible. I know. But like, is this a financially motivated decision? Or is this a a decision of conscience? Like, hey, we can't risk our students getting sick, therefore we are not going to play these games. Or is it we can't risk our students and fans suing us, I think it's and both. therefore we cannot play these games? Everybody will be different on that board who's making those decisions, and I bet some are one way and some are the other way. Could be. Uh, in the middle of all of this, the players and the coaches are being very outspoken about the fact that they want to play they want football. to play mm. like they want to move ahead and play football a friend of mine headed into his freshman year this year he has signed nine release forms oh for to going back to, to school? school yeah that's basically like if i get covid i don't sue you i mean he has signed form after form after form he was telling me that he wasn't afraid to go back to school until he was on like his fifth form oh until they all and then came he was out like, okay yeah starting to get a little nervous here well they want to make sure that you don't sue them so that's why yeah it's true so we don't know yet announcements not made yet maybe today probably today what do you, did you hear that 
What do you That's do? That's the air being let out of college football. What do you What do you do with your Saturdays in the fall? And so well, I hear I some of you like you go the... hiking and you enjoy your life. No, 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 because you're. It just depends on your area. I hear you, but I just also feel bad for the players to miss out on. Like, what if that was your your senior year there? What do you do? I mean, you technically still have another year of eligibility. But are Maybe. they going to want to stay around a whole other year? I'd say we could do, what if we did football in the spring? But we're not going to. Well, that could be an odd, like, you know what? Don't shut the door. Yeah, I like that. Let's not shut the door. Yeah, I'm just saying they won't. Well. But they'll say that we could. Yeah. It's like, nice, oh, we could. It's nice to think about we have some positive uh, options for down the road when it's safer for everybody. You know, we'll release Tenet in August. <laughs> Don't bring up Tenet. I'm just saying. Tenet is this movie that they were like, oh, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. No, it's not. And then they're like, it's never going to on demand. And they're like, well, it's never going to happen, period. It's a never. (laughs) It's just one of those things. Where do you go when you need someone to listen to your problems and give you a big hug? Not here, obviously. This is The Riot on Radio U. You know what, Nikki? It's not all postponement news. It's not all pushing back. Let's have good news. They're making plans to someday make other things. Yay. Someday, probably. You got new stuff that'll come soon. Yeah, so how about this? How excited are you for Zac Efron's remake of Three Men and a Baby? So is Three Men and a Baby an old movie from, it is. from the 80s or 70s? or? Check this. I looked it up. It started out, it was a French movie that was successful. Mm-hmm. It was remade for American audiences. Now, I didn't actually have to look this up. Do you know why, why? I know about Three Men and a Baby? Why? Because it was directed by Leonard Nimoy. Leonard Nimoy is Mr. Spock. Oh, I didn't know he did other stuff. Me either. <laughs> it's really weird. But, well, I did know. That's that's why I know. Sure. Because I know things about Leonard Nimoy. So right? now they need to remake it, obviously. Right. And they're so, going to. With Zac Efron. So the idea is, I actually don't remember how... <laughs> I don't know how they end up with the baby. I don't know where the baby comes from. A woman, I suppose. Uh, But other than that, there are three men and the crazy hijinks that ensue from raising a baby. Because men don't know how to have like deal with babies. Well, I'm sure they'll modernize it in a bit. I'm sure the old 80s version maybe doesn't match up to the modern sensibilities that we have now. Sure. Well, that that's the plan. There's that. But I saved the best for second. And in this case, last. The word is, Nikki, that Tron 3 is a go. Both both of these really high-profile movies. <laughs> watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. I agree with you. Uh, I don't care. I don't, I don't care <laughs> about three men and a baby. But Tron 3, oh, I care, Nikki. Ovi loves Tron. I do. I'm not saying it's good. <laughs> So I'm don't take it that as I, that. I'm just saying I love it. He's and, just excited that I thought that franchise was just dead, dead in the water, dead. Like, completely dead. Because the second one, they they tried to put some effort into it. But they it really did. Didn't catch on. So then people are like, well, we're done with it. It's not a Tron. The second Tron movie, Tron Legacy. It's not necessarily a great movie, but I'll say this. It's one of the best looking movies Ever. And you like the soundtrack. Oh. It all works well art wise. It does. It's just that it needed a little help script wise in, in the other parts. Yeah, that's fine. But it, it looks and sounds. In fact, if you like Blu rays, it is probably one of the single best sounding Blu rays ever. It's incredible. Like, incredible, incredible thing. Uh, but, you know, uh, there's just parts. <laughs> it's probably the reason I haven't seen it in a long, long time. <laughs> But you're still excited, so Tron 3 is a go. Yeah, I would love to see that duo. And not that any... No, I'm not going to say that. Maybe someone will care. There is, on Disney+, Plus when Tron Legacy came out, they did a cartoon called Tron Uprising. Mm-hmm. It's good. No one believes me. I felt it. I saw, <laughs> did you feel the drop in I energy? Did. I did. It could be like everybody's hungry and you need a, something to just perk everybody back up. I found up, a but... lot of people that were just like... <laughs> <laughs> so Jared Leto is doing uh, Tron. He confirmed it. Yeah. So I hope he doesn't give us like an his, artistic take on it. His take on Tron is like his take on the Joker. Yeah. You know, though well, I still just tell him to not try too hard on it. I still actually think his take on the Joker was legitimate. Nobody Let's else. Let's see what he so. does in Tron. I, wouldn't it be great? I mean, think about it. Like there's Tron, but with like a grill. <laughs> not so much. 
Improper planning prevents poor performance. Clearly, the riot didn't properly plan. This is the worst of the riot on Radio U. Okay. Listen, I I hate to tell you this, but I think it's for our own good. If things are going well, just don't say anything. Shh. Just don't bring it up. Shh. shh, shh, shh. Because you're going to end up like New Zealand. So New Zealand, we actually mentioned it earlier. We did. Over the weekend, um, there was the report that they had crossed over the 100-day mark for no... No new cases. No new cases of COVID, and everyone... Read my lips. Yeah, everybody was... No new cases. Excited to share in the enthusiasm for New Zealand. Um, you know, then you had the other side that it's a... It's uh, an easier place to lock down because it's an island with a smaller population. Uh, but that for their area, what they've been doing uh, was turning out to be working. Mm-hmm. So then what is now right now is New Zealand's tonight. And they made a announcement because aren't they ahead or are they behind? Because isn't it their Tuesday evening? You're you are correct. Yeah. They, I'm assuming if they're. If they're kind of Japan like, they're Tuesday evening yeah, right like now. It's like it's nighttime there. So they just had where a, you lost me was oh, I couldn't remember what day it was. Oh, really? I was like, I think I'm saying it right. I mean, New Zealand's ahead was, of us. I was like, is it Tuesday? <laughs> no, it's their Tuesday evening tonight, and they had an emergency press conference uh, stating that they have now had four new cases in Auckland, New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Um, so they are. Putting that in a level three for that area, and then they're locking down the rest uh, of the areas in a level two. So everybody's all staying at home now. Yeah, so that has has changed from the four new cases. But they're not giving specifics on, like, why or what they feel created that just with those new ones. Two words. Unknown or. Exactly. They're, they're they keeping, don't know where it came keeping from. Keeping quiet on that. So that I'll was t- the big news as of uh, not too long ago. Do you want to know how they got it? Because how? I know. 5G. 5G. Stop it. It's not. It's not they got somebody. There's probably, a five, there's probably a 5G tower near their house. And it beamed the virus right into their house. You see, he's, he's trolling and teasing at the Bill same Gates time. <laughs> put a 5G tower in New Zealand to get those people. <laughs> he's not. And then he's going to sell them the cure. Nope. So that's not that, it. that No, that's not it at all. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, you can go ahead, Nikki, and keep believing your lies, the mainstream media narrative. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> But uh, there's a truth out there for you to grab onto. So, again, if you're just hearing, New Zealand has said that he's just shaking his I'm head because even he can't even do it. I love it. Um, New Zealand has said that there's now, after over the weekend, stating no new cases for 100 days. They've now just had four new cases in Auckland. And so they're being locked down again. Man, I uh, I know a couple of people that are waiting on results for their COVID tests. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, you think, because I've thought, maybe it's just me, I think that the idea of a getting thrown into a, a, a lockdown, like a, a quarantine, yeah. sounds like fun because you're like, dude, I can just do whatever I want. When you're really staring down the barrel of that thing, it loses its appeal. Sure. I well, mean, and, and then if you're if you're uh, quarantined because you're you're sick and you're not feeling well, that's different than if they're just telling you you got to go back to staying at home. I still hold on to the fact that, like, dude. Give me the asymptomatic version, right? Well, <laughs> welcome to Vacation Town, right? The riot. Not, Not everyone's fan. I wonder whose idea this was. Radio U. So was it Nintendo that came out just uh, not long ago to say, hey, guys, we had a record-breaking quarter? Well, yeah, I think it was, what was it, $50 people, billion or something? Like, pe- it was huge. People have money, and they're giving it to us. They were just saying how... Uh, the amount of money that, you know, per, <laughs> compared to previous quarters was just astronomical. And it's because during quarantine, a lot of people went with Nintendo to get Switches and Animal Crossing and all that stuff. It's true, Nikki. Well, I got another one for you. The NPD, which is not, uh, they basically look at overall shopping trends. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember what NPD stands for. I'm that good at it. Uh, so they came out to let us know that, hey, it's not just Nintendo. Video game sales across the board, Nintendo, Sony, mobile gaming, whatever, up 
percent. A lot of people picked it up. It, it was it's an okay thing to do when you're staying at home. Yeah, Sony said for them their software sales, not their hardware sales, but their software sales had doubled versus the time last year. Now, of course, they had two major releases uh, in the second quarter of the year, but turns out that we are still spending the big bucks mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to playing video games and it's not just a Nintendo thing. We're buying games because we're stuck inside. Yeah, Maybe. so why why not? Yeah. So, Nikki, what about, what's your next buy? How's Animal Crossing I going? I play Animal Crossing a tiny bit almost every day. Yeah. So it's your new Simpsons mobile game? Yeah, I used to play this old Simpsons game, and I haven't played that for a few years. But for this, I just like to play a tiny bit. I know some of you guys, it's intimidating. You put hours and hours in, and you play during quarantine, and I got started later. But I just like to check in a little bit every day. In there. Keep it clean, you know, clean your island up and make sure it's all running smoothly. But I don't build or do too much um, expansion stuff, Obi. <laughs> Slowly get into that. It's just a little maintenance. Yeah, just every day, just a little bit. But I enjoy it. It kind of gives me a couple of minutes to uh, turn everything off. Unwind a bit. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, Nikki, taking a look here with uh, all of these sales and all this stuff going on, it makes me feel good because uh, I've been buying things. Yeah. So you're on trend. And oh I'm, my like, gosh, I'm you're right, on trend. Finally something where I'm right in the <laughs> meaty part of that curve. It is. You're doing what you're supposed to. And if you want to see some of that, you can actually watch our Obadiah Plays videos. Uh, those are on uh, Facebook. You can find them at riot.radiou.com. And don't forget that today, if you want to see, like, when I tell you that I'm playing all these games and you're like, his life is pathetic, get an up-close look at how pathetic it can be. <laughs> As during my Instagram takeover today. So this week, um, us DJs are taking over Insta stories on our Radio U official Instagram. So you should be following us there and just watch the stories each day. Obi's today, Sydney tomorrow, Hudson's on Thursday, JR and Lex are on Friday. Uh, But yeah, Obi, you can see what his life is like on a Tuesday. You're going to be disappointed. I like Adam's text. He said, imagine how much money Nintendo would make if they could supply and demand. Because that's the biggest issue with Nintendo stuff is they, they're they out of stuff. Like, they just don't ever have yes. enough hardware, like, switches, and they don't have enough items to actually meet the demand. It's true. Like, I mean... It can during, so much more. Especially, it seems... Well, no, it's been the whole time. Like, during the pandemic, especially that... Uh, the Switch that has the detachable... Yeah, the, uh, the original one. Joy-Cons, that one. People were, like, climbing all over each other, making insane promises, spending huge amounts of money just to get those. The Riot, Riot Podcast. Radio U. Man, just kind of tired today. I was at uh, Tim Cook's party last night. Uh, he became a billionaire. And you had to was, go. I, well, I mean... <laughs> He always throws the best parties, Mm -hmm. and it's really the finger food. Like, that's the stuff that gets me. Like, the entrees are fine, but it's the appetizers that are just out of this world. Was Obi actually at Tim Cook's party? You'll never know. Okay, Nikki, if you don't know who Tim Cook is, he is the CEO of Apple. And as of yesterday, he has become a billionaire. I so. guess I thought he already was, but maybe not. No. No, no. not him personally. Poor Tim. Well, he's just living the life of a super ultra millionaire. Yeah. You're not even like the low millionaire. You're the bigger one. Like you're all the way up, but like, yeah. man, it, sometimes it's time to cross over. Good for him. Yeah, he's a billionaire now. So what do you think you're going to do differently? I mean, he's not here, but that's what I want to know. What do you think now he would do you, differently? Now that you're a billionaire... Instead of a millionaire, what uh, what are you doing differently? You think he's a little sad because if he had the drive to get to that, then that's over. That was it. Yeah, and what else is there? I mean, you can keep trying to make money, but it's hard to get more than a billionaire. So, like Alexander, he weeps for there are no more worlds to conquer? Yeah, it's nothing else to achieve. Uh, well, you know what? There are lots of things he could achieve. Well, and- as far as his wealth um, number, like his main number. At some point, it just doesn't matter anymore, right? I mean, when you're a billionaire, your uh, your grasp overextends your reach. Like, you you literally can do whatever you want. Your limitations become human limitations. I think if his setup is like that, though, to where if he has the proper people around him, then he doesn't feel the stress with that. Because you can lose all that money. 
Well, yeah, it, it would take you some work, could. but you could. People around you could lose your money that's, for you. That's true, but like you could lose a couple hundred million and still be okay <laughs> and not notice it as much. <laughs> but I mean, you think about it, like the kind of stuff that he, you and I, spend our days and nights in a struggle to not necessarily survive, but you know, you're when you're building wealth, you're like almost got a thousand dollars in the bank. It's happening. <laughs> Woo! Everybody else is more of a paycheck to paycheck type of style. And in Tim's world, he's like, he doesn't know oh, what a paycheck is. Why? Why does my body continue to age? He doesn't even get an every other week paycheck. Darn this mortality. <laughs> like those are the things he's thinking about. He's not thinking about like, well, if I save my money for the next six months, I might be able to get a PlayStation. <laughs> But not both. You can't get the PlayStation and the Xbox. That's that's not where he hey, is. It's a different different life. It's a different it has world. its negatives too. We just don't know what they are because we're not there. Could like I'm willing. If you want to know what they are, <laughs> I'm willing to go. You're willing off to take it. Take and the risk. Do that, and then I'll come back, Nikki, and I'll talk to you about. What are the real drawbacks of mm-hmm. the billionaire lifestyle? They say it's harder to make friends, but. I don't have a lot of friends anyway. So we'd love to find out. So whatever. So Jason texted, you look down on the pesky millionaires? I guess when you're a billionaire. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been said, who is more content? This is from Justin. The billionaire or the guy with 11 kids? Justin. I think it's the billionaire. It could be the billionaire on that one. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know if that's the right example (laughs) for most people. Yeah. Uh, Because like. (laughs) You got to be happy, but with whatever you have. Contentment, Nikki. Contentment, yeah. That should never change. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm very content right now. Thanks for listening to the Worst of the Riot podcast. Oh, no. I missed it. Do it again. You can hear us live every day on the Radio U Network through the Radio U app or at riot.radiou.com. Violent vomiting. Oh, don't. It's from the potluck food. And watery diarrhea. Stop it.